Hello, in today's video, I'd like to show the process of packaging a wheel into a box, a custom box for shipping. The wheels that I have are Nissan GTR wheels. These are front wheels. The dimensions are 20 inches in diameter with a width of nine and a half. And I'll show you that on the back somewhere here, it should be written 20 by nine and a half. The 45 over there is an offset. One thing I like to remind people is that a 20 inch wheel is actually a little more than 20 inches in diameter. Right here at the widest part, we're going for 21 and a half. This is what a typical 20 inch wheel um, measures. And on the width, it's usually an extra inch. So this one here is nine and a half, but in reality it is 10 and a half. So keeping that in mind, just make sure that whatever box you get can take 21 and a half inside that is not on the outside. So you want 21 and a half, 21 and a half because it's going to be a square if you're putting it in a box with at least 10 and a half uh, with height or depth, however you look at it. So that's why I am doing custom boxes. In the past, when I lived in larger cities like St. Louis and some parts of Illinois, it was easier for me. It was pretty easy for me to walk into custom wheel and tire shops and tell them, hey, if you guys don't have any uses for the boxes that you have for wheels that you've sold, I'd love to have them. And they were always glad to let you take those. Unfortunately, I live in Terre Haute, Indiana right now, and I've visited a few shops and all of them said, we don't have any boxes for you. So I've resorted to being, to always make my own boxes and reuse, recycle, repurpose boxes a little more diligently. So for example, there's a 24, 24, 24 box from UPS. Usually on something like this, I double the boxes that I don't use, and then that's extra protection. But in this case, last time I was in the big city, Indianapolis, I went to Home Depot because Terre Haute, Indiana does not have a Home Depot and I got some of these boxes. The dimensions are actually 21, 24, 20, but as you can see, I broke it down and it looks a little interesting because I cut it up in different ways and made it work. And this is what it looks like. So 21 on the top, 24 sideways, 20 this way. If you are to use it as supplied, and this is what that looks like right here. So here are the dimensions, you can see that? Okay, this is what that box looks like right here. And as I said earlier, it is, if you were to do it exactly the way they tell you, 21 tall, 24 long, and 20 wide. And since we put the tape measure on the wheel, you know that's a little bit of a problem. We don't have such a big problem with this part right here. 24 is great, but again, that's extra space on the side. 21 the we can kind of make the height work that's not such a big deal we can play with that the 20 so that tells us that we cannot stack well when you just look at all the dimensions the way they add up you might have been able to put two wheels in there in that you if the wheels were smaller you would stack them like this right this wheel this way down and two wheels but then you'd be cutting right at the 21. Unfortunately, this 20 right here messes with the whole deal because as I said, it's a 20 inch wheel and that's 21 and a half inches. So what I end up usually doing sometimes is I take advantage of the dimensions this way. Here is the 21. And then this is a 24, actually. I was calling it differently. This is a 24. So I get, sometimes when I need to ship two wheels, if they're narrow, like nine inch wheels, I get one wheel, put it right here, and the other wheel right there. So two wheels, sometimes that works, but again, that 20 kind of plays with things a little differently. So what I'm going to do here is that I will consider that I have 24 by 21 at least I have that 24 and 21 which is going to be this face right here and I'm going to modify that box to make it work I'm going to shorten this 20 I'm going to basically bring the box a little narrower like that and then I'll use that box to ship one wheel 
these wheels have been refurbished, as you can see, with the extra protection. And so when selling things like that, I would try to make sure I give as much protection as possible. And in shortening the boxes, I'll be able to have it. This is already a double wall box, double, double wall cardboard. But when I shorten the boxes and do the things I'll be able to do, you'll see that I end up having extra thickness in certain places. So this video is just to show you my process and I hope it helps you in case you find yourself in a situation like this. Okay, here we go. I usually like the Home Depot boxes because they're not too expensive. And as I said, the dimensions are somewhat close to the wheels that I usually dabble in. Uh, 20 inch wheels typically is what I deal with. And hand holes, they have hand holes. Hand holes are pretty interesting because I think intuitively most people would want to take this box like this, including me, by how I folded it. And then when you tape, the tape goes over the hand holes. I found that this makes it harder for the people shipping, the people carrying your boxes when they go to deliver them. So I changed my strategy. And I decided to start taping boxes this way. When you tape this way, yes, you might have a little bit of a gap, but you know what? You get to leave the hand holes accessible because there's no tape running this way. So keep that in mind. Okay, so right now we've got, it says we've got, we have to leave this side exposed. 21, this way we can verify that if we want to. 21. Yeah, it's 21 and something. It's not, it's a little more than 21. Then 24. Keep in mind what side is 24. This right here. And this side is 21. It's 20, sorry. 20. It's just a little more than the dimensions they advertise, but it works. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to split the box. As I said, I want to shorten it based on how it was made, right? So this part right here, the way I'm holding it, the 20 is this part right here. So I need to shorten the box a little bit. And the way I'm going to do it is shorten it by cutting this corner, if you can see this part, and cutting that at the corner, then I'll just drop, the, there'll be two L's at that point, right? There you go. Yeah, there you go. Then I'll just lower the L. Okay, I hope you got it. This part right here is where the box is usually glued together. I'm going to go for this. Okay. And then go for the opposite corner. And what I'll do here is get my scissors. Helps me get a cleaner cut. To make sure you at least have an L, an L here. Let's cut it. All right. Keep that in mind. So, once again, try to remember what your dimensions are. I, I will not be messing with this dimension. Well, yes, I will be actually. I'll be reducing it both ways. One, I'd like to shorten it. Being that my wheel right here was 10 and a half, I, will, I would like to get maybe an extra inch if I can. Let's just say an extra inch. So from here, remember this is a 20 part, right? This is a 20-ish part. So what I'm going to do is I, I could or would move it to 10 and a half. Well, 10 and a half is the dimension. I'd said 11 is what I'm going for. But one thing I notice is that if I do it as 11, 11 is going to end right here in this hand hole. So how about 12? 12 is just barely over, but it clears. So I'm going to hold this right here. Mark my 12. The tighter the better, right? Because I'm not planning to use any extra padding or anything like that. This is such an expensive way to ship stuff, but 
I like the process and I've shared this in previous in other videos in the past that part of what I'm trying to do long term is um, find a way to design boxes on um, efficiently you know for people that ship wheels I guess in short I'll be aiming for a box manufacturing company Sometimes what I do I'm in the basement so there's all kinds of sounds going on I'm using the back of this knife score that and then I can bend it perfect what I'm gonna do as an extra step is just cut this flap so this is what 12 does for me so take whatever measurements you do sometimes when to ship those larger wheels if you can see those wheels over there those are larger they're wider they're about um 10 and a half in diameter in so in width which means they 11 and a half so for those i would try to get a box that's about 13 or so and we'll take measurements at the end of all this it's interesting how the measurements end up working out so let me cut this not all the way out just until this corner and hence all right yeah i was making sure you could catch me on the camera okay there we go this shorten it from here you go. Maybe this makes more sense to hold it like this. It was 20, it was 20. Now it's a little more than 12, around 12. Okay, so that's the first part. The second part is this box right here. So the height, once you fold the box, is going to be 21 and a half, right? That's, that's good, we like that. But then this part right here is almost 24. It is 24. So I'd like to shorten that, and I'd like it to be right around 22 to give me just, just barely, just a little bit of play. So that's what we're gonna do. But here, what I'm, yeah, I think 22 will be fair enough to do that. Like 22. Here, it's going to be just a little different because what I need to do is I need to actually shorten this completely and this is going to be such a small band I don't, don't, I don't wish to work with it so I'm just going to cut this one off that took a while I did have a knife knives are quicker the scissors are cleaner but trust me, it's much cleaner than it would have been with a knife. So I got this part going on. Instead of bore boring you with the details, I'm just gonna go ahead and cut the other flap and then I'll show you how it's gonna work out in the end, okay? Once I bring those two corners together. So now I've got my two halves of boxes from Home Depot and uh, I need to somehow make sense of this, turn it back into a box, right? So what I do here, fold this over. I'll first make sure both of them are facing upwards. I don't want the, you know, one side to look upside down while the other one looks right side up. This is pretty much it. 
flaps, a little flap on the outside. And that's that. So I'm going to go to the bottom of the box. The bottom. over then this with this flap over but right now all I'm trying to do is hold the box steady so I'm going to get the tape and tape this part right here just to keep the box to have it hold shape for a little while I have to admit having such a large surface like a pool table to work on really helps a lot for that, but I've done this before, like on the floor. Pretty much it for now. We just want a box to hold shape, right? And then I'm going to set this on the floor and load it up. Okay, so here's the box with the dimensions. I haven't held the top, so as you can see, it's pretty loose over here, pretty loose over here as well. But well, we have a plan, right? We're gonna get it all squared up. And what I need to do at this point is just figure out where I'm going to. I have a, I have a system, not this side, but this side. Whenever I'm done folding each of my boxes, this gets exposed and the back of the wheel goes to that side. So the face of the wheel is going to be here and it, it's going to matter in a does it matter? Maybe not, but I'll show why that is even a point of discussion right now. So here's the wheel. Slide it in there. Fits pretty decently. Very little room to move around, but still something nevertheless. So I'm going to pad it a little bit. All I'm doing right now is just holding the shape of the box. And sometimes for this part, you've got to get some, put some elbow grease into it.
only complexity up here is that while taping it down, I had to make sure I still left some room for this handhole over here, right? Or if you choose, you could tape on the other side, but remember, the handholes are pretty much opposite of each other, so you still have to deal with this other side. So choose whatever side you want that makes most sense to you. Having a handhole here almost makes sense because you have quite a lot of things running this way. So let me pick the box up and tape it while on the on the pool table. All right, so let's finish taping up this box. It's pretty simple the way I do this part. Just go down this way, all the way to the back, and do the same on the other side. So, I like to start somewhere here, so I can end back up here. Seems like that should be enough, but I'm a belt and suspenders type of guy, so I'm going to go all the way down. Until the tape meets the other tape. Cut it right there. Then do the same thing on the other side. Actually, before doing the same thing on the other side, I'll just go over this corner. See this flap? Lift it up over here. I'm going to double up. Just go one over again. I'll start on this side because there's a handhold to contend with. Tape on cardboard is good, but tape on tape is excellent. Pretty good adhesion there. Okay, so this is the top. Again, I'll remember this is the top, and I'll remember that this is the back side of the wheel. We'll talk about that again. Don't worry about it. No handholds to deal with at the bottom, so go nuts with the, with the tape. That's pretty much it for the bottom, but what I'm going to do is now take this part.
so most of it's done. Let's do the bottom. As you can tell, we still have this loose flap over here. Have to deal with it somehow. For these, what I've been doing is just going over this way. at the bottom I could go over a little more All right. that's the bottom the top Same thing, let's just secure this flap. You don't want anyone grabbing this. And I, I honestly wish, and I still intend to do this by that really wide tape. Yeah. That would solve a lot of my problems. Remember, hand hole on that side. And this is it. All done. You see that? The hand holes on opposite sides. This one is near the top, well, the bottom of the wheel. This side is almost on the top of the face. Of the face. Now, the reason I was talking about making sure, keeping steady, trying to remember how I was putting my wheels in there. So for all of them, the faces here, faces mostly protected. Um, the bottom of the wheel is over here. Again, there's quite a few layers of cardboard protecting the wheel. But my thought was this. From experience, if you don't give people holes to handle your wheels, they're going to make holes or make handles. So with this like this, it doesn't really matter. It's not such a heavy wheel. I'm not too concerned about it falling. And as I said, there's enough protection. There's this side, there's this, you know, on the bottom as well. So before the wheel impacts something, someone really has to intend to do it. But the other thing I was thinking was that I would like him ship like this. And when you ship them like this, this is where the faces of the wheels are. And I'll remember that each time. So when you, so how do you, how do you enforce that? It's kind of hard, really. We could put the shipping label over here to try and tell people this is how to carry it. But one, can be a little awkward, although they're not very heavy. Can be a little awkward. I'm guessing this is like, what, maybe 31 pounds, give or take. And number two, you already have handles here. So people are going to naturally want to grab them by the handle so it's it's a fight you have to figure out what you want to find full dimensions remember the 12s and the 22s we were dealing with it's crazy what internal dimensions or what interior dimensions end up looking like once you actually fold the box up we'll take measurements at the end of all this it's interesting how the measurements end up working out okay so we had 12 right right now we have a little more than 12, 12 and a half. So we're gonna go with 13. That's what the shipping companies go with. The shipping dimension is 13. On this side, this is a side that was shortened, right? 22 and a half. So it's like, we're going, we're going to go with 23. And then this side over here was not messed with. This was 21 from the package. And it's going to be uh, you could call it 22, but in reality, there's a gap down there. It's more like 23. So 23, 23, 13, despite the wheel being whatever dimension it is. So if there's anything to be learned or something you could take away from this is that uh, your wheel, your 20-inch wheel, sometimes requires such a large box to ship.